Welcome everyone. My name is Angela Mills. I work for the Town of Amherst. This meeting is being recorded. It will be posted to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. And at this point, I am turning things over to the chair of this subcommittee meeting, Alex Lefebvre. Uh, thank you, Angela. So uh, seeing the presence of the quorum, I'm going to call the meeting of the Jones Library Building Committee uh, Outreach Subcommittee to order at 401. I'm going to perform a sound check to make sure that everyone can hear and be heard. Um, Austin Sarat? Here. Uh, Alex Lopez? Here. And Alex Lefebvre is here. And Aniko Lopes will not be joining us today. Um, and then with us, we also have Craig DiCarlo and Will Fernandez from Colliers, and of course, the ever fabulous Angela Mills. Um, uh, so uh, pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting can do so by clicking on the live link to this Zoom meeting. That can be found on the public meetings calendar on the Town of Amherst website or by dialing in by phone. Public is able to comment during the public comment segment of the posted agenda by raising their hand. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Um, also, we have one attendee at present. So this should be, I think, a fairly quick meeting. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna hop right in. Um, the first order of business we have is approval of the meeting minutes from June 14th, 2022, if someone would like to make that motion. Move approval. Do I have a second? I'll second it. I wasn't there, which makes it difficult. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. You're allowed. You're still allowed to vote on it. Remarkably, I don't really understand that, but that's my understanding of things. Um, so, does anybody have any questions or comments about the meeting minutes? Okay, seeing none. Um, Austin, how do you vote? Uh, to approve. Uh, Alex? I'll approve. It's very accurate that I was not there. <laughs> and Alex Lefebvre, I will approve. Um, next item on our agenda is keeping community informed on the project. Um, so as everyone knows, the newsletter took a pause for three weeks. Um, uh, so um, I will um, go ahead and I've started the next um, newsletter, which we will get out. Um, but I would love, Austin, maybe if you could give me any update about the design subcommittee that just happened, because as you know, it had to be done in person, which means it couldn't be recorded, which means I was unable to watch it. So if I could just get that little piece, if there's anything that needs to be included in terms of updating the public, that would be great. Uh, the committee met and reviewed um, comments uh, provided by members of the public. Uh, and decided which ones that the committee subcommittee agreed with, which ones that it had questions about. And those uh, comments will be discussed by forwarded to the Jones Library Building Committee. Great, perfect. All right, so um, good. Um, and then in terms of, um, so I didn't create this agenda. <laughs> so, um, and the um, person who did, so someone helped me out, which I appreciate. Um, so I'm gonna sort of loosely follow the agenda. Um, Alex, you were um, spearheading or, or in the process of uh, doing community outreach relative to temporary library services. I'm not sure if there's anything that's really happened on that yet, or if you have any updates or any information you wanna provide on that. Um, yeah, so it's come up in a number of different spaces, um, and the uh, my understanding of where we're at with it is that we're more or less going to be told that there is a site. Um, it is going to be an inf this section will be more about informing people than necessarily soliciting opinions upon it. Um, and so, as that takes shape, it's going to be more of a uh, community update versus. Um, community input. Okay. And then Craig, did you want to share? I think there were some there was some conversation um, at the last full JLBC meeting, which neither myself or Alex were present at around the temporary location. So I don't know whether that's helpful for Alex to get a quick little update about that. Sure. So um, as of the last meeting, we um, Sharon has been reaching out and 
finding locations, uh, potential locations. Um, there will be all indications um, say that there will be multiple locations because the library needs a certain amount of sort of square footage in the temporary condition. And there aren't, there isn't a single location that has that capacity. So it'll be uh, different functions in different areas um, around town. Um, and what we have now is we have um, a, a subset of locations that are, look like they're um, good for the temporary use. And so we're going through those looking to see if there's any concerns or red flags or if they seem generally, generally appropriate and then um, kind of moving forward. But I believe as of the last meeting, we are still in need of more space. Thanks. So I think one of the th I think one of the things I heard Sharon say too is, I think uh, Alex, as you're talking to people, or to the extent that you're talking to people, um, if people have ideas about spaces, or some lovely business owner wants to offer up some space, like the Mill District did for the temporary North Amherst Library, that um, yeah, that would all be welcome uh, was what what I had heard as well. So. Um, my understanding is that we are now, and again, I've been gone for three weeks, so somebody correct me, we're now in the cost estimate phase of the project. And so in a sense, we're in the three week period doing the reconciliation, the cost estimate. So from a community outreach perspective, there's probably not a lot we're doing right now other than just sort of keeping the public informed about where things are at this moment in time. If that's not the case, somebody feel free to Get me up to speed on what I might have missed. If I may, you are, you, you've almost got it exactly right. So the uh, so, um, schematic design set was finalized and issued to two cost estimating firms, one that is hired by the design team and one that is hired directly by the town. Um, so they look at the drawings in parallel uh, and they have two weeks, actually three weeks because of the holiday. We gave them an extra week um, to do their work and then we'll come together. I think it's on July 26th. Will, does that sound right to you? July 26th, I think is a Tuesday is when we're gonna do that reconciliation effort. So that'll be a one day effort where we go and um, put the two groups in a you know virtual room and have them hash out how much each line item uh, costs sort of and why. And then we will present, uh, Colliers will present to the town that the results of that reconciliation effort. Um, and so that, and then concurrent with that, um, select members of the town uh, of the project have been asked to review certain aspects of the documents, but um, Collier's is doing an in-depth uh, technical review of the documents, which we'll also turn over um, to the client, to the town as a report, so that uh, you'll have the drawings, the reconciled cost estimate, and uh, a report about you know, how, how things look and, you know, where things might be able to be tightened up a little bit um, going forward. So in terms of sort of the next phase of community outreach, um, I guess two things. So I had one thought. So as we've been receiving feedback from people um, around the exterior design, um, I've noticed a couple of things. One is we either get really generic comments like I love the building or I hate the building, um, which doesn't super help me because I don't know what they love or what they hate. So in terms of being able to do anything with that feedback, it's it's not super helpful. Um, but when, when we've had the opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one with people and really drill down to what elements they either like or dislike, um, what I found to be interesting is that often people's impression of the building is not always accurate to what our current building looks like. Um, and so um, it struck me that it might be a good idea, like we did the library tours early on in the process. Um, I was thinking about taking the actual, you know, sch schematics, but the exterior drawings and having us lead walks or offering walks for people to actually walk the exterior of the building with plans in hand so that when someone, for example, someone made a comment that, you know, they disliked how we were losing, like every, every building, every window is a rectangular window. That's actually the case in the current building as well. So 
that doesn't tell me a whole lot. And the only non-rectangular window is the Whipple window and that one has to come forward. So I just, I thought doing a walk might be a good way to get people a little more focused on comments around the exterior, but also I, just, I found it illuminating for myself when I walked with people's comments around the building in hand and start, I started realizing things that I didn't necessarily consider um, or think about. So I wanted to do that as a next step. I don't know whether other people have thoughts about that um, or not. Uh, and if people thought that was a good idea, I thought maybe we could get either, you know, the friends or other volunteers to help lead these because I think, that, again, they're less about they're more about collecting feedback. And when somebody points out something like, I can't believe we're gonna have a metal roof, we can actually, the current edition has a metal roof or, you know, just like just being present to have sort of those conversations. So just put it out there. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? <laughs> Alex. Um, yeah, I think that that makes a lot of sense. It, uh, one thing that I'm curious about is if we have any, um, is if it would be worth reaching out to any local real estate companies who might want to donate their time and services, specifically um, doing sort of like a 3D virtual tour for people so that it's accessible online as well. Um, I know that that's something that really helped my kids uh, when we were moving from Chicago because um, Crocker Farm had done it. And so I don't know if there's a connection there or if the town already has the capacity to do that in a way that people could walk through the current schematics um, online and also see it side by side with uh, any proposed plans. Cool, thank you. All right, I like that. Okay, anyone else? Austin? So Alex, I like the idea. Um, is the idea to show what is or to show what is and uh, what we are proposing? Because we're, we're not yet at the place where we have something to show about what we're proposing. Yeah, it's, it, yes. <laughs> so the thought was again, so for example, you know, um, I'm speaking for my own particular, like this is me personally, um, you know, there's one element of the dormers that I don't love, right? And I found myself walking through the building and realizing we have the exact same dormers on the existing edition. The difference is in the picture, they're flat and in the um, current, you know, they're angled slightly. And I don't know that I would have been able to articulate what I didn't like about those two other, so it's, it's and, I, and that to me seems like something we could potentially change. And I'm not advocating for anything. I'm just saying from my own experience of walking through with the current picture, which is still being developed, right? It, it was helpful to have the current actual building, not the building in my mind, uh, so that I could really articulate what I liked or didn't like. And so I thought for other people, as we collect comments and as we get to really looking at exteriors and the final, like, you know, how is this, the, the uh, monitors, the daylight mine, because right there are still like little things that we still have to decide. And I found it for me personally more helpful um, to have both in front of me so I could really see what I liked or didn't like or something I thought I didn't like and was like, oh, it's already there. <laughs> so, so that's clearly not the thing I thought I didn't like or that I did like. Or So I just want to help people really see sort of where we are in the process and help them more clearly articulate um, what's appealing or not appealing, either in the current building addition, but also in um, what's proposed currently in the exterior schematic. And schematic that's is probably very, the wrong word. That's very, very helpful. And uh, the question I would have, Craig can help us answer it, is how much of the exterior, like the, the angles of the roof and the like, are to be decided as opposed to, um, at this point, they're pretty well set. And again, I'm just curious, I, uh, I don't have an answer to that question. I think um, angles of the roof, angles of the dormer, shape of the dormers, those are all things that are still up for discussion that will be defined through the design development phase. Right, right. very helpful. And I know we have a couple uh, renderings from the design team, specifically sort of from the rear of the existing library, um, which, you know, perhaps you could, you know, print out somewhere kind of larger format 
so that you could either stick them on an easel or someone could hold them up. And yeah, you could stand in the rear, uh, look at the existing building and then hold that up and say, and that would, I think that would help people visualize um, significantly. Great, thanks. And, and thank you, Austin, for that question because I, I was making assumptions and it's good to hear that my assumptions are <laughs> not wrong. So, um, okay. Um, so uh, in terms of, um, we don't have any next outreach events other than uh, scheduling these walks. Um, and so it sounds like until we get to the next phase of design development, that's probably just these walks and keeping the public informed uh, and Alex continuing to get feedback, you know, about services around temporary locations is sort of what makes the most sense at this point, I think. Okay, cool. Um, okay, uh, yeah, I don't think I have, does anybody have anything that they wanna ask, talk about relative to? I did take down today all of the, um, charts and signs and things that we had up at the library because I wanted it to be clear that public feedback on schematics is over. Um, and I would like to get something up next. I don't know if people have thoughts about, I don't know whether we take all the public comments and sort of show the chart of the results. I don't know whether people wanna put up the latest set of schematics or whether we wait till we get the design package. I don't know if people have thoughts about Sort of next things. I mean, the library has been a, a nice place visually for people to see things. So I don't know if anybody has thoughts about what can or should go up next. Alex? Um, just given that we're in the budget time or the, the budget, blah, it's hot out. Uh, given that we're in the budget reconciliation time, um, one, one thing I could imagine doing is maybe you know, announcing that, um, explaining the process and why there are two different groups uh, currently going through what they're going through. Um, and then also maybe making space for friends of the library um, if they're still doing a fundraising push around that. Um, it might be a really good side by side uh, of like, this is, this is where the money is going and how responsible people are being with it. Great, thank you. Anyone else? Anything else? Cool. All right. Well, I'm not going to belabor a meeting that doesn't need to be long. So um, the next item we have is our next meeting, which, Angela, you know this better. So we were off a week. We flipped because of the JLBC meetings. So two weeks for us, I think, is when the next JLBC meeting would be. So given that, is that right? So I'm looking at the bottom of the agenda for today and it shows JLBC on Tuesday the 26th at 4.30 and design right. Friday the 29th and outreach on the 9th of August. Yeah, okay, cool. So does that work for everybody then? Yeah. And, and just so we're that. clear, the we can meet via Zoom through March of 2023. Yeah, which is great, I think. Yeah, I personally am happy with that for many reasons. Okay, Austin, was that day, did that work for you? Okay, good. Um, so I do see that we have two members of the public um, and if either of them would like to uh, make public comment, now would be the time for that. So um, Angela, Bob Pam has his hand raised if you wanna. Hey, Bob. Bob, you're in the room if you want to go ahead and make your public comment. Okay. Um, three items. One is um, I've looked at the comments. There are 400 of them. It is very hard to make any sense of that. So um, some way of summarizing it might actually be helpful. So that rather than trying to go through 400 comments, you are looking at a set of comments relating to the teen room or the outside or whatever, um, make it a little easier to get some idea of where people are thinking about it so that 
um, and those things that are being considered and those things that are being rejected. That is first comment. Uh, second has to do with, uh, I guess, a response to Alex. Uh, you said that, that you had some discomfort with at least some aspects of the windows. Um, I've had continuing difficulties with the uh, <clears throat> shape of the windows, the size of the windows, the, the way in which they are developed. Um, there's no way for me to know whether any of those are being considered or whether they've been rejected. So you know, it is useful to, uh, when you have somebody who is uh, clearly interested in a, an aspect for there to be some way to get feedback as to whether or not these comments make any sense to you. And the third comment is about the, the general shape of the, the north east segment, which has been added to the building, uh, which has the basic shape of a barn. Um, and the concern that, that rose in my mind as I thought about it is that um, on the inside portion of it, which um, sh is shaped as if the, the roof line were coming in, I just am hoping that you are not creating a new valley, which would be similar to the valley that we currently have around the, the atrium. Uh, anything which creates um, a space where you cannot clean it, when you cannot clear it, um, and where snow and leaves, et cetera, will, will be accumulated is a concern. And I, just looking at the drawings, all that I see is that that may be part of this design. And I would just, I'm hoping someone has thought about that. That's it. Great, thanks, Bob. So um, I know in most public meetings, um, people don't respond to public comments, but this is a public outreach meeting. So <laughs> I'm going to respond. Um, so Bob, the comments are actually available um, online publicly. They can be sorted. They can be sorted by what phase they are in the project. They can be sorted by what room they're in. They can be sorted by whether they've been approved or not. And anything that's not been approved, um, you can see the reason that it's not been approved. So. Um, we did have a public outreach meeting where we went through, you know, how that all looks. Um, but I would be happy <laughs> to also walk that through uh, for you if you'd like. So that is all available. Um, in terms of a way to get feedback, um, so actually, to the extent that people have used tools that provide their email, they do get a response. If they use something anonymous, we can't respond. Um, but uh, yeah, so sort of the route people choose uh, sort of impacts uh, whether or not they get a response back. Um, but otherwise, we've in all of our um, outreach sessions have talked about the fact that, um, you know, people can see uh, where their comment is, what day it's going to be reviewed, by which committee, and whether or not there were questions about it. So that's all in the spreadsheet. Um, and as to your last comment about the shape, actually somebody did make a comment about that. I believe it was reviewed in the design subcommittee and is something that is um, being put over to the architects to look at. So, um, great. Um, any other public comments? Okay. Anyone have anything else? Any topics unanticipated by the chair? Which there are none for me. All right. With that, I'm going to call this meeting to a close. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And uh, we'll see you next week in the building committee meeting. Thanks. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks, everyone.